Duran Gray is one of my favorite bands, but I also have a bit of a complicated relationship with their music. A lot of the albums they've released throughout the years at first fell completely flat for me, but then they would grow on me gradually over time and I would wind up listening to them over and over again until they became my favorites. Take for example, Withering to Death. At first to me that was a mostly forgettable album with a few standout tracks. Then after seeing them live at Avalon in New York City for their first US tour, it became an album that I'd listened to repeatedly beginning to end. And I imagine I'm not alone in that regard. You see, while a lot of bands start off edgy and abrasive, and over time they become a lot more accessible and poppy, Duran Gray really had the opposite trajectory, with more dissonant sounds and experimental elements being added over time. And this evolution made it ripe for a particular hoax track that I talked about in my mislabeled Napster Files video, the infamous track known as Sea of Retards. Although this track managed to fool a lot of people for several years, it very clearly was not Duran Gray. And in my video, I suggested that perhaps this was someone's way of mocking the direction the band had gone in. Well, as it turns out, I might have been wrong about that assumption. Recently, I was contacted by someone claiming to be the person who created this track, and while yeah, anybody can claim anything on the internet, I feel like his story is plausible enough that it merits hearing out. So for this video, let's take another look at this infamous fake Duran Gray song. This video is sponsored by Raycon. I use my wireless Raycon earbuds to listen to music basically whenever I go out. And with the holidays coming up, it's a perfect gift because it's something that they can use every day. Raycon earbuds start about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. They give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design for a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. Raycon's being generous for the holidays, so on top of their everyday great prices, they're offering all my viewers 15% off right now. So you could save big on gift shopping. Just click the link in my description or go to buyraycon.com slash wang and get 15% off your Raycon purchase. I never really expected to have an update on this particular story, in fact I hadn't even considered the idea that the person who made the track might have seen the video. If you haven't already, I suggest watching my video on mislabeled Napster songs first, but to summarize, there's a track entitled Sea of Retards that was attributed to the band Duran Gray. <laughs> And it spread from Napster and other file sharing services all around the internet with many people believing it for over a decade. So a week ago I get an email from a guy claiming to be the person who made this song. And I get a lot of emails like this pertaining to stories I've covered in the past. A lot of the time they sound like bullshit or a person that's just looking for attention or something like that. This one, though, didn't really have any of the red flags that tipped me off to that. And while there is no proof that this is the true story, it does seem like something that's extremely plausible. The email came from a 39-year-old man who did not want to be named because he didn't want the attention and he finds it kind of embarrassing. As he put it, I think that I would care less if the only song that I ever created that became famous in any capacity used the R slur. The email goes as follows. So, about 20 years ago, give or take, I spent a lot of time online. Like dangerous amounts of time online. I, like many others at the time, was too young to have much money. So AOL discs with free minutes slash hours were how I got most of my access in the early days. I got an old disc from Excite with time on it, and they had a chat program called Virtual Places Chat, VP for short. I loved chat rooms at the time, and VP was unique as the chat rooms were overlaid on web pages, and you had an avatar to represent you that you could move around the page. It made things interesting as any web page could be used as a chat room, and myself and one of my friends, been friends since we were three years old, became obsessed with basically just being trolls on there all the time. We eventually ended up living in one chat room called The Usual Restaurant, which apparently was an anime chat room, however, my friend and I weren't fans of anime, so I don't know how we got there. And now, this is one of the details in this email that to me helps sell it a little, make it a little bit more plausible. 
Although I never used Excite or Virtual Places, when I was looking into it, I did manage to find people who were looking back nostalgically at the chat room, the usual restaurant. And these same people also had an interest in anime and Japanese culture, so at the very least, what he's saying here is true. The email continues. We made friends there and were so fucking edgy. Like, I am seriously embarrassed of what a little fucking monster I was at the time. One of the people in the usual restaurant was a big fan of Darren Gray. This fan's handle on VP was Norn, and they were dating one of my best friends in the chat room at the time. Norn was nice enough, but pretty quiet from what I remember in the main chat. We would talk a lot more on ICQ, and after a time, we got closer and had more personal conversations on there. One day, either myself or one of my friends found Fruity Loops, probably pirated, and we started fucking around in there. And this is another detail that to me lends itself to the authenticity of this story. Because I remember very specifically at this period of time in the early 2000s, people just kind of stumbling across Fruity Loops, not really being into music production, but being like, hey, I guess I'll fuck around and make something. And this track emerged at the time when Fruity Loops was still Fruity Loops, before they had to rebrand themselves as FL Studio because of a lawsuit from Kellogg's. He continues, I was always a musical kid, but I never really got into songwriting or anything like that. I was big into industrial music at the time and thought, man, maybe I can do something with this. I couldn't. One thing I could do, though, was find ways to use it to be super annoying. The first Durin Gray song I wrote, I just titled Secret Song. It started off purposefully quiet, my hope being that Norn would turn the speakers up, and then started into a triple volume mashup of fucking circus music, Hitler speeches, and the most outrageously loud air raid siren I could find. This completed the troll. Essentially, this was a screamer custom made to fuck with one specific person. I messaged Norn via ICQ and told him I had started listening to Darren Gray and was really into it. I asked him if he ever heard Secret Song, he said no, and I sent it to him via ICQ. Keep in mind, this is still dial-up day, so it took forever to send it to him. It was so hard to wait, but I was rewarded when 30 plus minutes later, he messaged me back and said, I hate you so much, worth it. I told my friends about it and they thought it was hilarious, so another day I was at my friend's house and we decided to make another Durin Gray song to troll this person with again. I Can't Place of Sea of Retards was definitely the second song we made, but I have distinct memories of sitting in my friend's basement, recording ourselves making terrible voices into a jank microphone, and spending hours laughing at ourselves making Sea of Retards. All of the track is my voice and my friend's voice saying stupid shit and being sped up and slowed down. I know we sent that one to Norn as well, much to his displeasure. And that got me curious, so then I'm poking around in the Sea of Retards track, speeding things up, slowing them down, reversing them. There's so many layers and so much noise in it that it's really hard to pull out anything coherent. But there's a few things you can dig out in here how their voices might have actually been. Like that thing at the beginning that apparently is the best. The best. The best. You have that one really shrill, high-pitched sound that if you slow it down and reverse it a little bit, it sounds like someone just making a goofy giggle. And then there's one line that I didn't really mess with at all, but I never noticed it. Some guy saying something about a telephone. Maybe someone who knows how to mess with audio better than me can pull these apart better, but I don't even know if that's possible. The email continues. So, how did this all end up on Napster? Well, we had another friend who we met on VP that lived about an hour away. We would also record bad songs with him. My local friend and I would drive from our small town to this person's place and just make bad songs in his basement, or sit around smoking cigarettes and being stupid into the late hours. I went over to this guy's house one night, and he showed me what he had done with our Darren Gray stuff. He had put it all up to share on Napster and was cackling like a lunatic because people were downloading it. And in a follow-up email, he did tell me that the friend who uploaded the song to Napster passed away due to cancer, so RIP that guy. I don't know why Sea of Retards is the only one to survive and hit this kind of cult status that it has. The only way I found out about it was I worked with someone whose girlfriend was a huge Darren Gray fan. I told him about my stupid fake songs my friends and I made and he was super shocked. His girlfriend came in and he told her I made it and her jaw hit the floor. 
I asked her where she downloaded it from and she said she just got it in a large compilation of their stuff. And to be honest, I feel like I remember there being like a comprehensive Duran Gray discography that was floating around that did contain Sea of Retards. I started digging around and found forum posts debating whether it was a real Duran Gray song or not. The dude that put them on Napster even commented on one of the YouTube videos after I told him about it and basically told a very truncated version of this story, but I can't find his comment anymore. The biggest hurdle I have at this point is proof. I literally don't have the original Fruity Loops files or MP3s anymore. That hard drive died a long time ago. At one point I even put them on a CD to try and keep them, but fuck man, that's almost 20 years ago at this point and who knows if that CD even survived, let alone where I put it. I tried to hang on to that hard drive just in case it could be recovered, but I doubt it could have survived this long with this many moves. This is the real story of it though, so you were partially correct. It was made as a troll. Honestly, I never even listened to Duran Gray till much later. If it wasn't fucking skinny puppy adjacent, I didn't give a shit at that point in my life. And there you have it, possibly the true story of Sea of Retards by Duran Gray. If true, it's really amusing to me that this song, this track that became a part of this band's lore for decades, and fooled tons of their fans, wasn't even as a lot of people, myself included, believed a way to mock the direction the band had gone in, but simply as a thing just to troll one specific person. But to me, probably the most interesting revelation from this email, if true, is the existence of other fake Duran Grey tracks. And that one entitled Secret Song, for some reason that seems to, uh, trigger some kind of a memory in me. Like, I want to say it sounds familiar, but at the same time, it's been so long, and memory is so suggestible that I'm not confident in saying I definitely remember this being a thing. I don't know, do you remember something like this? Because this is going to bother me now. I can picture the series, the lost, the, the lost fake Durin Gray song. Maybe that one doesn't need to be found. Though. But anyway, that's all for now. If you like this video, check out my video about the Neutral Milk Hotel time travel theory. Oh yeah, also I have new Saki Sanobashi designs with art by Deathink. Check them out.